Hi, welcome to Writing with Sandhya. Uh, I'm really happy today that Andali Vajit is in this session. I had met her a long time ago. Uh, I had a small book club called Varnika Book Club, and one of my friends, Anamika Mukherjee, had just released a book uh, worth every gasp, and she said, oh, Andali is actually a published author, so I'm going to bring her along. Uh, so we were very excited because the book club, nobody else had, you know, uh, published a book <laughs> till then. So we were very excited to meet Andali. And um, so here we are, I think, about uh, many years later, over a decade later, and she yes. has like 33 books to her credit. So I have a lot of questions for her. So let's just jump in and talk to her. So welcome, Mandali, to Writing with Sandhya. Thank you, Sandhya. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, so, you know, in my last uh, session, I interviewed with uh, Sundari and uh, she has also written like many, many books. So I had the same question for you that I had for her is like, how? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, so to be very honest, I treat uh, writing like a job. You know? So for me, it's not like a hobby or a passion. It's a job which I really love doing. So it doesn't feel that difficult. And, you know, it's, I think, um, since it's also the job that is uh, like, you know, paying my bills, I have to plan ahead. I have to like, you know, once I finish a series, what do I have next? I have to start making a plan, a writing plan of sorts and, you know, uh, what I plan to release in which month. So all that has to, you know, come into, into consideration. So when it happens like that, when you sit down to work on it, like a job, um, I think it, you know, it's easy enough to write once you've got the story plotted, once you have an idea of what's going to happen. Um, uh, it might take off a little bit, it might take away a little bit of the, you know, the whole romanticism of writing, but for me, I enjoy every aspect of it, you know, so even this aspect where I sit down, um, I don't even have to say that I make myself sit down. I willingly sit down every day. I, you know, uh, work on it every day. So it's, uh, so there's a lot of joy that writing brings me. So it's something that I look forward to, you know, each day when the day begins, when my other work for the day is done um, and I, you know, sit down to write. So it's something that brings me a lot, something uh, very interesting to look forward to during the day. So that's, I think that's, you know, when these things, when these factors come together, it becomes easier to, you know, write more, to be prolific, yeah. So, in fact, uh, as you're speaking, like so many more questions were bubbling in my head. So, <laughs> I started okay. like the phrase where you said that it pays your bills. So, uh, I think, uh, especially a lot of I think writers now, not a lot of people are writing. That's which is fantastic, but uh, doesn't always pay the bills. So, I think yes. it's great that you have uh, reached to where the so writing you. and publishing. Uh, you know, publishing with pu traditional publishers, it brings a lot of uh, fame and recognition and a lot of, um, you know, your name gets out there when you publish with Penguin or HarperCollins and all that, but it doesn't pay much. Uh -huh. It doesn't, you know, the, the pay is not, it's not something you cannot call it a living. So right. that, you know, and I never wanted to, I was tired of doing corporate jobs. I've worked in corporate spaces as, you know, marketing and um, managing the marketing and all that. And, you know, doing a spot of technical writing, content writing. And uh, for me, um, I wanted to do a job where I could get paid to write book, uh, to write fiction. So, mm -hmm. and that was when, you know, I, um, I wasn't very sure of taking the route to self-publishing. Mm -hmm. But um, I started in 2019 and I kind of, you know, like, okay, this is what I want to do. This sort of thing came over you know? and it's, 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 it pays pretty, it pays decently well. Okay. So... Okay, that's very heartening to hear. Yes. Um, and uh, since you said that you just treat it like, you know, a profession, so what's your process of writing? Uh, where do you sit and work? And do you have, uh, what's your like schedule like? So um, I sit down, um, so, you know, I have a desk and I like to work at the desk. Um, I don't like to work in, you know, um, I don't like to sit on the bed and write. It's not good for my posture, which I've also realized as I'm, older, it's made things very difficult, you know. With, I I had a lot of neck pain, shoulder pain recently. So I kind of, you know, made sure that my setup is, um, I think the also, also being the prolific, being able to write is also has to do with how much you can do it physically, you know. If you're physically comfortable, and you know, if 
all if everything is in place, then it makes the job much easier. So I have a dedicated office space where I sit down and write. And um, um, I, I, I try and sit down like say 9 a.m. or maybe 9.30, you know, sit down and write. And the thing is that I don't have like a fixed time, like from 9 to 10 or 9 to 12 or whatever. I get distracted a lot with social media, with answering emails and all that. And, you know, so um, I try and see if I can finish maybe a chapter or two a day. You know, okay. important chapters, and then I kind of get on to other work because you have to also, you know, um, focus on marketing your work. You have to focus on pushing it out there, all those things, and reading and other things like that. So, it's a sort yeah. of routine that I've developed. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. And uh, I know you do write in a few uh, different genres. So, what uh, is your favorite genre to write in? Um. So my favorite genre is uh, horror. <laughs> because um, it's very, I find it very difficult to write. I find it very challenging, you know. So it's uh, romance is uh, enjoyable. I enjoy writing it, but after a bit, after a little while, it kind of, you know, starts to get tedious and stereotypical, and you know, um, and I, I need to take a break from it, and I need to write something that is on the far end of that spectrum, you know. So, uh, but I also, I really do enjoy writing horror. I, can, mm -hmm. I think I have this, you know, um, I'm scared of horror movies and all that. But I'll sit and I'll watch them maybe only after I've read the synopsis or something. Mm -hmm. But um, writing horror for me, I think it, it, it's because it puts me in the control seat, you know, and I'm the one delivering the scares. So mm -hmm. I enjoy that. It's, I, why I find it difficult is because I sometimes don't know um, how, some, what scares people is very subjective. You know, so what might scare me might not scare someone else at all. And, you know, they might find it very cheesy, very corny. So I find that difficult trying to find that right balance between, you know, what is actually scary and what is like uh, not scary at all. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, then can you just tell us something about your, maybe your recent books, some of your books? So um, I um, published two novels last year with Penguin. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is All Drama, No Queen, and uh, the other is a young adult novel called Mirror Mirror, which Duckville published through Penguin. Um, both these books are very different. All Drama, No Queen is a, you know, a romance novel sort of thing, what they call, you know, a rom-com, a chick lit novel that they call. And Mirror Mirror is a young adult story about a girl trying to understand her place in life and, you know, especially uh, when she is confronted with the, you know, body, body shaming and, you know, her own body image, those issues. Mm -hmm. So both those books have been received very well. And last year I started writing a new series for uh, my self-publishing uh, ventures and uh, it's a five book series and I published the third book last month. I plan to publish the fourth one next month. So mm -hmm. that has been doing very well. It's called The Reluctant Romances. It's available only on Amazon um, as an ebook. So mm -hmm. if you have a Kindle or if you have the Kindle app on your phone or iPad or tablet, then you can download it and read it. Right. So you don't need a Kindle to read the, these books. Yeah. And the series has been doing really well, uh, Touchwood. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I find, you know, uh, readers have really connected to this new series. There is a touch of humor. There is, you know, various uh, issues that I've uh, touched upon while telling the story, which seems to have resonated a lot with the readers. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. In fact, when I read, so I have your first book. So when I meet you. It's a second book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will, uh, yeah, Rupa, I'll, uh, you know, hope to get your autograph on this Sunday. <laughs> so, yeah. That's my second novel, actually. Second one, yes. Yeah. And uh, because when I met you, I just published the first. You said this one was all going to come out, so I waited for the you yeah. know, I got it at that time. Um, and what I liked about it was, you know, just uh, you know, contemporary, you know, Muslim characters in a uh, contemporary situation, <laughs> light and romantic, and all of that. So that was nice uh, to read, right? Because it's a uh, little rare to see if that sort of not genre but such genre if you will so but in your stories uh, have you tried to challenge some of the stereotypes about muslims and uh, can you tell us something which you have uh, how you have treated the subject in young stories so i really feel that um, you know the 
whatever stereotypes there are, it's because the people don't know. Uh, you know, they don't know. Uh, they, I think uh, many people are ignorant about the reality uh, because they've been, you know, fed various notions from Bollywood, from other popular culture. And I just try to present people as they are, you know, irrespective of whether they are Muslims or not. I try right. to present them as relatable and as real as they are. And I think the readers sense that, you know. Mm. So when readers read it, it kind of uh, grows on them. They understand this without really having to um, think that, you know, okay, we didn't think that this was how it was sort of thing, you know. So I, I try to make it, uh, I, tr I don't try to consciously do this. I don't mm -hmm. try to consciously do it. And if it's uh, smashing stereotypes and well and good. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I think that's nice. And when you talk about relatable, I think often when we start writing, we do have something in our, of ourselves and maybe in some of the characters. So is there any character that you relate to the most, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I've written so many books, it's very difficult right. to uh, pinpoint maybe, you know, one character whom I relate to most. It might have to, uh, I think it would definitely be, it's not okay definitely is not the right word probably mm. um so there is this character of a 17 year old girl um i wrote in a book called asmara's summer mm -hmm. and it was published by penguin in 2016. so uh this girl has to spend her summer in a very uh, uh so she's a slightly spoiled girl slightly um what do i say um she has her own notions of what she thinks is cool and not cool and she has to spend her summer in a not very cool area of the city and you know she's kind of stuck there and she kind of rediscovers herself and you know tries to realign who who she thought she was with the reality and it is i think i like i like asmara uh the character of asmara a lot because she's very gutsy she's very bold and she's very she's not afraid of anyone and you know these are characters that you wish that we, we sometimes we sometimes wish that you know we were like this so yeah. i would say she's not like me but she's someone i would have liked to be at that age <laughs> that's nice yeah uh, i also heard that um, you're going to be collaborating with some other authors and coming out with uh, some work so uh, that, that that was an interesting model so i wanted to ask you uh, your views on collaborating with others and your experience with that and do you have any tips Yeah. So I was saying um, the collaborate the collaboration has been very interesting. It's uh, with uh, two of my author friends, Shilpa Suraj and Alicia K. And um, we kind of came up. I think it was Shilpa's idea. We came up with the, she came up with the idea. Let's do a story together. It should be fun. So you know, three different writing styles in one book. Mm -hmm. Three different couples. I think oh, I think what readers can expect is you know three different. Uh, ways of writing a romance in one book you know three different styles and um it was it was challenging only in the sense that we knew only about our own characters we didn't know about um, the other you know the subsequent characters uh, the, the characters that the others were writing on so we would have to constantly ask you know why is why is this happening why is that happening uh, or you know do you think he, he would do something like that or she would do something like this so that sort of thing so it is it is it has been a whole lot of fun it's okay. uh, out on 24th january oh wonderful Sorry, okay. 24th february i'm still stuck 24th. in 24th february that's next week okay and what's it called it's called forever yours forever yours okay and um so are they interconnected in any way or just yes. three complete, they're completely they are. interconnected so there's oh, okay. a couple who's getting uh, married and uh, their friends have thrown them a combined bachelor bachelorette party in goa and uh, so all these three couples are there in goa so oh, you know so okay. so one so um, alicia is writing about two of the friends who are throwing the party and who kind of hate each other but actually secretly love each other and Shilpa has written about uh, the bride's best friend who is a very famous Bollywood star and, you know, uh, whatever he's going through and who he fa falls in love with. And I've written about the main couple who are getting married, but who actually don't want to get married. So it's like a sort of a fake engagement sort of scenario. So, uh, so it, it's been real fun. I think it sounds interesting, I think, for readers. Uh, so that yes. should be something interesting uh, to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> 
So um, you said that, you know, it's, um, you know, when you write it is once you develop the plot and the characters, then you can just sit down and write and <clears throat> then it becomes easy. But how do you develop your plot and characters? Because that is uh, often the challenging part, right? Especially if you are going to have like uh, at least a few out each year. So how do you do that? I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't get the last part. Your plot and characters. Um, it has to be done, you know, um, very consciously. I sit down and I make a lot of notes. Mm. I have a lot of, um, you know, notebooks for that uh, reason, which, you know, I kind of sit and make down, make notes. I have, you know, I just, it, reasons for me to buy more stationery. And, you know, <laughs> so I sit down and I write and I write extensively. And, you know, it's the writing part of it. In the notebooks is basically me talking to myself, getting my thoughts in order, getting everything clear, and you know what's going to happen and not. Some of this doesn't make into the, make it into the book, and mm -hmm. some of it does. So it's um, it's just about you know balancing uh, that and trying to you know thoda to you have to learn the craft of writing. Right. You, have, you learn the craft of writing, and I think um, also when you read enough books, not just mm -hmm. as a reader but as a writer, so you yeah. learn to pick up a lot of things. You know, and um, I also used to do creative writing workshops. So the, at least the craft and the the technique, the, the technicalities of it is a, like you know something that I am very comfortable with. So, so it is important to I think learn the craft and. Uh, um, I feel and that craft. you know learning the craft is something that uh, helps in the sense mm -hmm. that uh, it helps you um, craft your story better. It, yeah. it helps you put your story better. But you don't need to really do any sort of workshops or anything, you know. I mean, I never learned from anywhere. I went and started writing myself. I didn't know what anything was. So that's mm -hmm. the difference, you know. When you know things, it kind of helps when you know things. Um, I kind of also feel that if you know a lot of technical stuff, it, it kind of affects the spontaneity, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I try not to get too much into the technicalities of it when I'm writing. You know? So it's at the most I'll, I'll try to uh, decide things like um, the setting and, you know, um, like whose point of view I'm going to be showing. Is it going to be the boys and the girls? And is it going to be first person, third person? So these are the decisions that I make and then I sit and start writing. You know? So, mm -hmm. but... Um, I think writing is something, you know, I think you can teach people the, the, the craft of it, but you should also, I, I also feel that, you know, um, it, if you're a sort of instinctive storyteller, it helps a lot. It mm. helps a lot yeah. if you can tell a story well, you know. Yeah. You might be able to garnish it with all the right technicalities of the plot and everything, but if you can't hold a reader's interest in, you know, in the, the story that you're telling, if it's not compelling for the reader to, yeah. you know, read, then it, I feel it doesn't really help whatever class you do. You, you need to be that, you need to have that storytelling uh, uh, bit in you. And uh, that's also something I'm, I'm sure that also can be learned, but, um, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, because that's what I mean. Of course, everybody says everyone has a story in them. And of course, everyone is living life, so have stories. But uh, you know, it's just like any other expression or creative, uh, you know, so it just comes a little easier for some people or some people are more natural <coughs> storytellers. So I think it's uh, having that, so, you know, that ability and then developing it further or fine tuning some parts of it uh, with the craft, I think then, uh, then that helps, I think, yes. <laughs> so uh, you've talked a little bit about what has helped you uh, in writing a book. So, um, are there any other things that has helped or hinder you when writing a book? I think, uh, you know, um, what helps me when I'm writing a book is um, having uh, the time and the space to do that. Mm -hmm. It helps right. a lot, you know, when you have the time and space to work on it exclusively. Mm -hmm. What hinders, I think, is what hinders all female writers, you know. Uh, I don't think men have this problem. <laughs> you know, female <laughs> writers have, you know, you have yeah. children, you have the house, you have cooking, you have all this, and then you also have to write. 
Right. So it is definitely, you know, these are, I think, hurdles that every writer faces, every woman writer faces. I have to clarify mm-hmm. that. I mean, whenever yes. male writers start talking about the problems, I want to tell them, just shut up. You know, you <laughs> can just go lock yeah. yourself in a room and yes. you'll have a wife or someone who will come and feed you regularly. And it's not the same, you know, so male privilege is something very different. Right. Uh, which they don't even uh, realize or acknowledge. It's women right. who have to, you know, I think it's ad- admirable that there are, you know, so many women writers who are still, uh, despite all these um, hassles in their lives, they, you know, make time for writing because they're passionate about it. Right, absolutely. So you have no sympathy for those <laughs> who are entitled to <laughs> that. <laughs> Especially, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes it just annoys me, you know, when I read about male writers, especially <laughs> who are like, um, I'm going to the, I've booked a room in some uh, cottage in some hills to go write my novel. And I'm like, Go ahead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's yeah. I know that would be ideal, idyllic, and ideal. Yeah, I think it's that's very that's unrealistic true. for women to do that, you know. Unfortunately, yeah. women don't yeah. have that luxury. We we'll so. have to tag along the kids along with us, and <laughs> yeah, there won't be any writing done. So I wanted to ask you because writing, you've done so much of writing, and writing is also such an intensely personal process. Have you ever felt that writing has been therapeutic to you in any way? It has. Um, last year, in fact, in the COVID second wave, my husband and mother-in-law both passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. And, to yeah. yeah, it has been a very difficult year for me. I wasn't able to talk about this until, uh, you know, for many months, I was not able to talk to anyone about it. I mean, in the sense I was tweeting about it, mm-hmm. I was, uh, you know, I was very heartbroken. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, writing, um, I was working on a series then and it seemed very, it seemed very careless of me to get back to writing when this all this has happened. But at the same time, when I was writing, I was able to shut away all this this, you know, from my, um, what's happened right. in my life and focus on the characters and focus on um, what's happening in their lives mm-hmm. as um, transient and as shallow as, as it might be. It, it was an outlet for me to um, focus on something else for a change, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, writing, I would say, is far more than therapeutic for me. It was really, I feel it kind of saved my sanity, especially last year. I mean, writing until before that, I used to look at it as a as a sort of escape from the world, which was boring and, you know, and at least in my stories, I can write about all these exciting things and all that. But since last year, writing um, definitely shifted uh, what it meant to me. Yeah, yeah. It's been like a lifeline to you, I think, almost, yes. So, yeah, um, I think you're very... Uh, brave and strong and the leap. So wish you all the very best for your writing career, all your books. I'm sure you will do very well. I think uh, you have great spirit and great, lot of heart. Uh, Thank I think you. I'm sure you in your writing. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you so much then for coming on the channel also at this time. But I do have a small rapid fire segment. So let's <laughs> okay. go to some, uh, okay. you know, some uh, few quick questions. So if you could be a character in one of your favorite books, uh, who would it be? You talked about a smart one, but... Yeah, <laughs> I could be a character. So I don't know how this is rapid fire because I have to think so much. <laughs> go, go ahead, take your time. Yes. Um, I think I, um, I might want to be... Um, uh, no, it's too sad. One of the, it is one, there is one old lady in one of my books who is the protagonist. It's called The Sum of All My Parts. And mm-hmm. Mariam is this old lady who has lived through everything, seen through the loss of her husband and also the man she loved, you know, who are not the same people. So uh, it's, uh, um, I don't know, I, I don't I, I don't think I would want to be her. I think I would want to be um, maybe some, some character in the future who gets to travel a lot and who has a lot of uh, fun in life. And, you know, I don't think I've written a character like that as yet. There you go. You have, I think, the beginnings of <laughs> another book or novel over there. So this could be one of your future books. Yes. Um, and if you could spend a day with uh, another popular author, um, whom would you choose? Um, I would uh, like to, I think, um, Sarah J. Maas. Oh, God. God. She writes yeah. fantasy fiction and... Okay. Uh, 
her books are just you know beyond <laughs> you know i just love reading the fantasy that she writes i don't okay. think her books fall under young adult anymore you know no. they're too explicit but uh, okay. the fantasy worlds that she comes up with are just amazing i would love to you know spend her time digging her brain to see where does she get these ideas from how does she form it how does she put everything together so beautifully so yeah oh that's nice yeah you never know hope you get a chance sometime <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh what's your pet peeve my friend entitled men we talked about pet peeve uh, <laughs> i think that is my biggest pet peeve entitled men not just for writers everywhere entitled men expecting you know women uh, to uh, generally you know i think entitled men everywhere is my pet peeve <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and um, you have written about uh, you know food I think in your books and also it uh, you know I think you've written more than biryani more than just about, biryani more than just biryani okay so what's yeah. your favorite food uh, item uh, it would have to be chocolate cake okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. like dark chocolate or the regular chocolate dark chocolate oh okay yeah dark chocolate Uh, my daughter is uh, turning out to be an amazing baker and she's oh, wow. hot friendly chocolate with dark chocolate all of that so that's a big hit with uh, you know my sister and everybody yeah but she has a lot of amazing yeah wow that's amazing <laughs> right. um and i know you've uh, you're a bangalorean <clears throat> you've been in bangalore throughout um so and what do you like best about bangalore um you know it's home and mm-hmm. um, you know i don't know uh, it's um, it's the only place i've called home actually i'm from yeah. vellore tamil nadu actually but okay. we've lived all my life here and um, i don't feel this way when i'm in any other city when i'm back in bangalore it's like it kind of it's like you know it's home for me it's yeah. no other place matches up to that for me yes that's fantastic i feel the same way so Uh, mm-hmm. with that i think we're coming to the end of this uh, episode thank you so much for joining and the leap and uh, all the very best for all your future works uh, thank you thank you for inviting me sir